Welcome to The Big Fish. I'm Captain C.T. Williams and we have a great show for you today because I'm going to share a tip with you that I've never shared before. You see, it goes something like this. This is my new boat for 2019. I'm very excited about it. Rivalo 246 came in outstanding, beautiful. They made a few changes, one being a glass windshield just like in the front of your truck. I think it's going to work very well. However, our trip today got a little bit snaggled up when I realized that I had left the keys to the boat at the dealership, along with the remotes that control power poles and trolling motors. So today we're gonna learn how to mooch a fishing trip from your friends. <laughs> I I'd already talked to Captain Mike Gallo and I knew he only had a one-man charter today. And so uh, we just sort of showed up and asked if we could go along for a ride. Ended up being a great day, so I think we have a great show. Of course, a little later on, we'll head down to the Big Fish Kitchen and see what's cooking and get some info from Mike on maybe what the fishing will do in his area for the next coming weeks. So come on, let's jump in somebody else's boat and go do a little fishing. Well, Captain Mike, I appreciate you letting us uh, come along today. I, I certainly appreciate Mr. Lloyd, your charter guest generosity for, uh, for uh, allowing us to jump on board. Um, Mooch. Mooch, I mooched, I know, it's a mooch, but guess what? <laughs> that's, a, it's a, that's this week's fishing tip, right? So um, as we head out, talk to me about what, what to expect. What are you seeing right now in the, in the Slidell area and east side of Lake Pontchartrain? You're you, you fishing uh, Mr. Go, going across, what's, what's been going on? There's still fish in a lot of locations. I would say deeper water seems to be more productive. Lakeshore Estates, Eden Isles, Gohegan's Canal, Venetian Isles, down by the wall. I get scattered reports by the bridges, not any real consistency. There's fish being caught, just not enough to pull my attention and keep me there with clients. So we're gonna head down to the wall, water's deeper, lots of places to fish, it'll be a few degrees warmer. I'm looking forward to a good day. There you go. Uh, so, you know, one of my theories is, is is uh, compression of temperature, I guess, is the best way to explain it. Can you catch fish in 55 degree water? Absolutely. Um, but we went from 74 degree water to 54 degree water in about a 10 day period. That rapid transition in temperature, it's not a slow temperature change, a, a rapid temperature change will often get the fish to shut down. You hear people go, oh, they had lockjaw. Well, I think a lot of it is just acclimation. Are you seeing any of that or, or, or is it, is it starting to normal out now? Is it starting to settle down and the fish are getting active again? Well, one of the things we talked about earlier was it's a little warmer down by the Mystigo. A huge body of water that's deep, so it maintains its heat. And I think the effects that you're talking about do take place, but it's over a slower period of time and the fish slowly acclimate to it. Right. I had two captains run trips for us yesterday, went out to the wall area and did fine. So I'm not looking for a big change in today. Our water temperature is actually 52.52. Ooh, that's When that. we get down there, I'm expecting 55. Okay. So I think we're going to be fine. Uh, it's a matter of getting down there and catching them. What is, what is your bottom temperature for speckled trout? Ooh, I hate below 50. Yeah. I can yeah. count on two fingers how many times I caught yeah. speckled trout in water temperature below 50. So, so a great tip for this weekend, if you're looking to catch fish, is to watch your water temperature. Uh, it's critical, and we're talking about three degrees that we're looking for just, just, to, just to make a, a big difference. A, a few degrees will make a big difference when it comes to the water temperature this time of year. So pay real close attention, if you have the ability with the equipment on the boat, to what that temperature is. We're going, you're in uh, Martello's Castle, right off the Mr. Go, right where it meets Lake Bourne. And uh, basically, you can see the castle behind me back here. Water's pretty clear, a lot clearer than when we were up, 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 uh, up by the ship. Interestingly enough, as we pulled up, so, you know, when, when it comes to tides, the charts that you look at really are a reference. They're not exact. Uh, developed scientifically, but the fact is that Mother Nature sort of works on her own terms. And so as we're coming out, the tide is, by chart, falling. Well, it, it, we hit, mostly hit right at the split because as we came through Unknown Pass, which is very close to Marcello's Castle, it was still going in. Here it is falling, and it should be falling hard today. We're hoping that that'll bring some food out of the marshes, uh, get some activity going, and get some feeding going, and maybe we can put something good on the end of this hook. Fish on. Fish on already. 
Won't even give us, Lloyd, won't even give us a chance to get on the deck. That looked like it's pretty close to the surface. Good fish. Very nice. He's on fire. Another good fish. Jeez. Really nice. Berkeley gulp shrimp. Can't argue with that success. I got it. Oh. Wait, cut, cut. He's too small. Cut. Take him off. Not when Lloyd's putting fatties in the box over there. Ooh. I can't slide one in there that big. All right, we're going to move from this spot. Lloyd's catching yeah, right. too many fish. Well, I, I really do believe that the lighter weight may have something to do with it, but that's, that's fantastic. And the Berkeley Gulf, of course. So Berkeley Gulf on a quarter and an eighth. It's got to be an eighth because I don't have quarter. Up, oh, so it's an eighth. He's throwing an eighth ounce, so you know it's sinking very slowly. Ah, that's good stuff. He has got it going on that slow sink. Now see, I believe Lloyd's throwing braid too. So the light line's gonna help him cast a little better. He's not coming to the surface. Oh, that's a nice one. Cool. Yeah. Here we go. Got the net right here. And let me guess, he ate a gulp. He ate a gulp. Sprayed with gulp, gulp on gulp. Seems to be the menu of the day. Yeah. Perfect hook right in the corner of the mouth. Nicely done, sir. Perfect gulp, a pearl shrimp. Pearl white with a little gulp spray on it. Shrimp, shrimp flavored, shrimp on shrimp. Seems to be shrimp a big old dot. That is a, almost a perfect redfish. Coming up top and fighting. See, when they come up on the surface and jump around like that, they kind of tell me they're not that cold. Now, I admit, I looked at my temperature gauge and I started out fishing slow. Lloyd was fishing much faster and he caught a lot of fish. But after we caught some and seen them jumping, splashing, shaking their head, it kind of tells me they're not cold. We can speed up our presentation a little bit. And so far, I'm still behind Lloyd, but I'm catching up. Right ahead of CT. <laughs> I'm still, still behind Lloyd, but I'm catching up. All right, while everybody else is catching, and I kind of dial in my technique here, you take a quick break. We'll be right back with the big fish. There we go. Oh, what? About time. About time. Just got to get focused on it. Right. Not a big one, but it's a good one. <laughs> go ahead. It's a good starter fish. <laughs> starter fish. Listen to him. It is legal love. You want a secret spot? Find that pole right there, right on that wall. Martello's Castle, that pole, watch this, here we go. Ba -da -ba. Oh. <laughs> Woo, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is Let's a good see what one he's too. fishing with. He's going to be a good one. Spraying the golf on there. This is a on? good one. Boom. That's a big one. Boom. All right, all right. Coming back. Clear out, boys. What we got, what we got. Yeah. I can't fight hard with 10 pound tests. While he fights this fish, why don't we head on down to the Big Fish Kitchen and see what's cooking today. All right, this morning at GW Fins, we're gonna be making an item that we don't sell in the restaurant. However, we do sell down the river for French Quarter Fest, which is coming up. We also make it for employee meal, and it's a great dish if you've got one of those days when you didn't catch a lot of fish. I know going out with CT sometimes, we get pretty well skunked, and you know, you end up with four or five fish. This is a good way to stretch it. And one of the most important things about a fish taco is the slaw, because half of the, the body of the taco is gonna be slaw. We're gonna do a real quick dressing here. We've got mayonnaise, canned chipotle peppers, a little bit of salt, pepper, a little bit of the Cajun seasoning, and then a good deal of lime juice. And I've got some uh, cilantro, I'm gonna chop that up, put in there. And we've got some locally grown uh, Napa. And if you want your slaw crunchy, keep it separate and then mix it together uh, right before you serve it. And then we're gonna go to the next stage of our taco making, which is heating the tortillas. And the tortillas I've got here are, uh, are made in Baton Rouge. They're, they are hola nola. 
which are, uh, and these are a white corn tortilla. But I want them to be hot. They start to blister a little bit on top. But I really, I want them to be flexible because this is not a crunchy taco. This is a soft taco. Okay, right in there. They steam away. And they'll stay hot for 10 or 15 minutes. Of course, the more of them you have, the longer they'll stay hot. Now we're ready to fry our fish. This is a basic beer batter. I've got one cup each of corn flour or corn starch and all-purpose flour. I've got a pinch of baking powder, just like that, a pinch of baking soda, just like that, and a tablespoon of the, uh, the Creole seasoning and one beer. A coal works better on batter. And I've got some ice water there, and I'm gonna thin this to about the consistency of heavy cream. It doesn't look like I'm gonna have to really thin that much at all. You don't really wanna thick, I'm gonna put a couple of ice cubes in there. You don't really want anything thicker than that. All right, I've got a sheephead filet here, which uh, this time of year, they're coming in pretty strong. I'm gonna cut that into strips, because I, I wanna be able to hang on to them while I'm cooking them, because I'm gonna wave them through the batter. And I'm gonna, gonna give them a little dust in flour right down into the batter. I'm gonna get a few of these little fish fingers. I'm gonna kinda of wave them through the fat. All right, our fried fish is done, and boy, it looks good. Looks like we cut that fish a little bit too big. No, that's okay, There's nothing wrong with having the fish hanging off. So, baby fish tacos with Chipotle slaw from GW Fins. GW Fins has dinner items so fresh they print a new menu daily. Give them a call and tell them CT said to give you the best seat in the house. And as they say in the movie business, action! Oh, you! <laughs> All right, big beautiful red. Very, very nice. Whoop! They're like the polar bear fish. They do not worry about temperature. You can catch sheephead, drum, and redfish in just about anything but ice. So don't let that cold weather slow you down. <laughs> Hooks it up. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Tell you it works. I've been with, uh oh, did a gulp fly at me? <laughs> Boom. Good fish. Very nice. I switched to the gulp and I got gulped. Well, tide started to slow down a little bit and so did the bite. We're gonna take a quick break. And try to figure this out a little bit. You stay with us. Fish on, fish on under a cork, but deep under a cork. Whoop, I like it. I did that to my reel. Doesn't happen often, but it happens. And uh, switched to the spinning rod that had a cork on it before I went and put a jig head. I thought I'd throw it one time. Now it's deep. I'm about four and a half, almost five feet under the cork. But uh, first cast. Speckle trout. Speckle trout in 53 degree water. One, two, three. Woo. Oh, and it's a good one. Love that noise. Ain't he pretty? See, he's acting like he's cold. He's not jumping around too much. Good fish, too. Wow. Talk about quality. Listen at that funk. Oh, a little baby fish. Ooh, no, it, he's 12. Just didn't bite much. All right, here we go. Another pretty one. Ooh, good fish. Ain't that a good one? That's one that is pretty. It'd be prettier if it was on my lure. Well, it'd probably be smaller too, though. Oh, it had to come. <laughs> it had to come. You can't leave that door open like that. <laughs> Two, three, yo! Speckle trout. Okay, they stopped biting as much. Nice job. They stopped biting in the back of the boat. That is a solid in the back of the boat. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. This day ain't over yet, Gallo. <laughs> the day ain't over yet.
We're going to put a big old speckled trout in the boat. Oh, jeez. Hmm. Do I need the gas? Uh, we're going to need a big net, maybe. I don't know. Oh, it is a speckled trout. Oh, get back. Oh, let's teach these boys what a fish looks like. Whoop. Boom. Do you hear that thud? I like that. Fish love that. Song. That's nice. 17 plus, darling. We like that. Fish on. Oh, nice fish on on that one. There you go. Sling it in the boat. Boom. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at that. Good fish. Good head shake. Woo! That's pretty. Ha! <laughs> nice speckled trout. Do you feel like fishing? Oh, under a cork, deep under a cork, right against that wall. One, two, three. <laughs> In your living room. Spotted sea trout. So we made a move. We were really kind of on our way back in. We made the circle around and stopped by the wall. At least one little speck floating around here. What's Lloyd going? <laughs> he, he, was, he was listening to stories and that fish said, maybe I can get him while he's not looking. There you go. Good speckle trout. Well, uh, Lloyd and I really liked this spot. This was a great spot. I can imagine. This was, you for, caught for fish us. I, this was, this was fantastic. Now, we caught fish all day. But uh, one of us didn't catch fish at this spot. Yep, there's a skunk in the front of the boat. <laughs> in the front of the boat. I wonder what smell. <laughs> a great day on the water. A lot of great tips on, uh, on catching cold water speckled trout. I hope you picked up some. I hope you found some that would work for you. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness, that. you see? You couldn't end it. Couldn't, oh, with that little thing? Hey. Oh my <laughs> God. <is> gone. <laughs> the, the bait was bigger. <laughs> That's our finished fish for the day. We're out of time. Hope to see you out here on the water catching fish like we did today. But if we don't, do us a favor, please, and join us right back here on The Big Fish next time. Thank you for letting us uh, mooch a ride today, Lord. Very much appreciate it. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Get my minnow back in the water. <laughs> I've managed fish over here in all kind of conditions with Captain Mike, and he always puts us on fish. You know, today I was, working my bait a little fast and, and one of the things he said was slow your retrieve down and so it, it made a difference so I just I put a lot of value in finding a captain using a captain and uh, trying to pay attention to what they tell you oh, oh wait a minute even a squirrel can lose a fish all right well y'all saw him right that counts I saw him. <laughs> you ready oh that's a beautiful rock South Louisiana rock, imported. They don't grow here naturally. That's right. They're hard to catch. Tennessee limestone. But I have almost perfected it.